what's happening everyone? In this video we'll learn the syntax for operating with files using Python. In the beginning of this lesson we'll cover some basic questions including what is a file and why would you want to use files in your Python code. Later we'll open up a coding editor and showcase some examples as well as the syntax we'll use most often when handling files in Python. As always throw me a thumbs up if you find the video helpful and consider subscribing if you'd like to stay up to date on the rest of my Python coding content. So in some of our past videos, we've made use of the Python file operations, but never really covered them in much depth. In general, a file is essentially an abstraction of a location on your hard drive, from which you can write data to, as well as pull data from. Many common file formats you've likely heard of include .txt, .mp3, .doc, and so on. The list is essentially endless. Traditionally, the name of a file includes two elements, the actual file name, as well as the .dot extension. The actual file name itself should be descriptive enough for a user to have a relatively good idea of what's inside the file. Each file extension adheres to a well-defined formatting structure. So, for example, .mp3 files are made up of a series of frames, each of which contains metadata about the frame, as well as the actual data, which in this case undergoes some operation when being read to turn it into recognizable audio signals or music. If the formatting is at any point not adhered to, the file will likely be considered corrupted because the applications that read and write this file type rely on the formatting being correct throughout its entirety. On the other hand, a .txt or text file is far more simple than an mp3 and is essentially just a list of characters encoded in most commonly ASCII format. There aren't any sections or protocols you must adhere to when writing to a .txt file because when it's being read, applications don't expect there to be any structure. No matter what the file format, when it comes down to it, all files are stored simply as a list of binary numbers when they're saved to your hard drive. When working with Python, the file formats you'll likely use the most commonly are those used for storing raw data. These include, but are not limited to, TXT, XML, JSON, TSV, and CSV. These are all very easy to not only read and write from code, but also to open up in a text editor if you'd like to view the data outside of your Python environment. Each different file type comes with its own benefits and downsides. I won't go into much detail on each in this video, but I'll likely do an entire video in the coming weeks comparing the different extensions and how we can work with them in Python. For the rest of this video, I'll be sticking to working with files of the type .txt because it doesn't require any specific formatting and is easily opened and viewed in any text editor. Keep in mind, you can always declare your own file format for specific applications you're working on and declare your own operations for reading from and writing to files of that type. So now that we have a rough idea of what a file actually is, you may be asking yourself, why should I use files in my Python code? Well, the main attribute of files is that they're persistent, that they exist even while your Python script isn't running. This factor means that if you produce data during the execution of your Python code, you can save it to a file and it will still be there even after your code is finished. Alternatively, you can also utilize data via reading from a file that you prepared or downloaded before your Python script even began. Another useful aspect of files is that they can be used to transfer data among different programs you have running simultaneously. For example, you may have a program written in C++ for speed, whose job is to produce a string of numbers every 10 seconds. And you also have a data analysis program written in Python that you want to analyze the output of the C++ code. The most straightforward way of achieving this communication would be through the use of files. Having the C++ program writing to a file, for example named data.txt, and having the Python program read from that file every 10 seconds to get a copy of the new data. Along with these simple use cases, there are plenty of other uses for files that we won't have time to cover, but I'm sure you get the concept and understand how useful they can be in nearly every development environment. Now that we've covered some of the basics, we'll open up a coding editor and showcase some of the more common functions and methods you'll be using when operating with files in Python. So now that we have our coding editor open, the first thing we'll be covering is how to create and write to a file. The main function we'll be using for creating, writing to, and reading from files is the built-in open function. As we can see on the table, the first parameter to the open function is the name of the file we'd like to open. The second parameter basically informs Python of what we'd like to actually do with the file we've just opened. The three most important operation modes are read, signified by an R character, write, signified by a W character, and append, signified by an A character. There are also binary versions of all three. To specify the binary version, just add a B character to the end of one of the three original operation modes. In binary mode, Python will ensure to read or write to the file in a way that prevents the file from being corrupted. The only time you'd really need to use the binary operation mode is if you're on Windows and reading from or writing to an .exe or .jpg file. Since we're working with .txt files, we can avoid the binary operation mode. 
We'll be covering each of the three operation modes individually, but you could pause the video here if you'd like to jot down all three beforehand. So as we said earlier, we'll begin by covering how to create and write to a file. To create a file to write to, we'll use the W or write operation mode. The return value of the open function, what we're setting to the variable f in this case, is basically a high-level file descriptor that allows us to interface with the file itself. Because we passed data.txt as the first parameter to the open function, our new file should be named data.txt. If you'd like to write to the file, we simply call the write function, passing the string we'd like to write into the file as the only parameter. Whenever we call the open function, it's good practice to always call the close function when we're done writing to or reading from the file. After running the script, we can see we have a new file named data.txt in the same folder as our Python file. If we open the file in a text editor, we can see it has the same contents as what we passed to the write function. We'll now cover reading from a file. As you may recall, when reading from a file, we pass r as the operation mode. Calling the f.read function will be returned a string containing all the contents of the file. Running the script, we can see we have successfully printed out the data from the file. We'll now cover the append mode, the third and final mode of operation. Once again, to signify the append mode, we pass an a character as the second parameter of the open function. Because we're opening our prior file, data.txt, anything we write will be placed after the line we've already written to the file. Inside of the string we're writing, we're including an end line, or backslash end character, to tell Python to start a new line in the file. After running the script, we can open data.txt again, and see we have indeed written the second line into the file. We'll now cover some more common ways you can read data from your files. Once again, to open a file for reading, we pass an R character as the second parameter to the open function. If you'd like to read each line of the file individually, it's as easy as iterating over the file in a for loop. This would be a good idea if you're reading from a massive file and don't want to load the whole thing into memory at once. On each iteration of the for loop, we'll print out the line of the file after stripping it of any end line characters using the strip function. Running the script from terminal, we can see we have correctly printed out the two lines of the file. On this next example, we'll show how to read from the file a single byte at a time, so essentially a single character at a time because each character takes up a single byte in storage on the hard drive. Before we can iterate over each byte, we need to know the size of the overall file, so to get this information we'll be importing the getSize function from the OS library. Once again, we'll have to open our file using the read mode of operation. We'll now enter into a for loop and iterate an index integer i from 0 up to the length of the file in bytes. On each iteration, we'll set our current location in the file using the seek function. Pass a single integer input, the seek function will place us at the exact byte we specify in the file, starting from index 0 and going up to the length of the file in bytes minus 1. After setting our location, we'll print out the byte at that location using the read function and passing an integer 1 to specify we want to read a single byte. Running our script from the terminal, we can see we've printed out each character of the file individually, along with its byte index. And now, just to show what happens when you try to open a file that already exists using the write operation mode, we'll be opening our data.txt file and writing to it. We'll call the write function a single time, passing a single sentence as input. Opening the data.txt file, we can see by opening our existing file using the W mode of operation, we have effectively overwritten all the existing data in the file. You should be careful when storing data to files not to accidentally open a file in write mode if it contains sensitive information. Another useful function from the OS library is the isFile function. Passed a single file name input, the isFile function will return true if the file exists, and false if not. We use this function in our password generator video to check to see if we had already downloaded our source data. I'd recommend using this function when opening files in Python if you won't be sure if the file is on the user's system. If you try to call the open function in read mode on a file that doesn't exist, your code will throw an error, so be careful. For this example, we'll be printing out the results of the isFile function when we pass data.txt as the input, as well as a file name that we know doesn't exist. The last useful function we'll be showcasing is the listDir method 
also from the OS library. Past a string representing a location on the hard drive, the lister method will return all the files and subfolders at that location. If we wish to check our current folder, we can pass a single period as input. Along with the isFile function, you can use lister to both navigate through your user's file system, as well as locate certain files. Running a script in terminal, we can see the only two items in the current directory are the Python source code and the data.txt file. That takes us to the end of this video, everyone. Just for recap, when operating with files in Python, we'll be using mainly the open function. The open function allows us to read from existing files using the read or R operation mode, create new files or overwrite existing ones using the write or W operation mode, and append to the end of existing files using the append or A operation mode. If we open a file in the read mode, we can read the entirety of the file into a string using the read function past no parameters. If we wish to read a single byte at a time, we can use the seek function to navigate through the file and the read function past an integer 1 to read a single byte from that location. If we want to read each line of a file at a time, we can simply iterate over the file in a for loop the same way you would iterate over a list. If we open a file using either the write or append mode, we can use the write function to enter data into the file. The write function can be passed a string and can be called as many times as you want. And finally, after we're finished with a file, in any of the operation modes, it's good practice to call the close function to ensure Python cuts any connections with the file. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.